Okay, let's dive in. We're looking at March 2nd, 2025. Buga, Colombia. Something strange happened. Yeah, this uh, luminous object described as a metallic sphere basically fell out of the sky. Erratic descent, apparently. And it actually hit something, didn't it? Clipped a power line on the way down before crashing. Right, which immediately sparked this huge reaction. Eyewitnesses, news reports, social media just blew up. Definitely. We saw Tom Thompson that's at Cortex Zero on X posting about it almost right away. Then the Daily Mail picked it up. Loads of discussion online from different accounts. Uh, at Genga Today 1, at Drew Ponder. Even folks like at Tsoukalos weighing in, comparing it to other mysteries. And importantly, some early scientific observations started coming out too from Dr. Jose Luis Velasquez. So yeah, lots of threads to pull on. What we want to do here is, you know, try to unpack this Buga Orb thing. Look at the reports, the analysis, try to cut through some of the noise. There's a clearer picture of what was actually seen, what's been proposed. Exactly. Right. Because you're probably hearing bits and pieces, and it's easy to get lost. So... Let's start at the beginning, the discovery. Well, like you said, Tom Thompson at Cortex Zero was one of the first. His description emphasized that erratic flight path, the luminosity. And crucially, people filmed it. Multiple videos popped up pretty quickly. Which helps confirm it wasn't just, you know, one person's strange sighting. Something was definitely up there. And that power line collision. Yeah. Seems pretty important. Do we know if it was already failing or did the collision cause it to crash? That's a key question, isn't it? The collision suggests a sudden interruption. It wasn't like a controlled landing, more like something just, well, stopped working abruptly. Okay, so it crashes. What did the actual object look like? People recovered it, right? They did, and the descriptions are, well, there's something else. It's described as this solid sphere, metallic, very highly polished, reflective, like a mirror. And the surface. That's one of the weirdest parts. No visible seams, no welds, no rivets, no screws, nothing to show how it was put together. It's a smooth. Apparently, about the size of a big soccer ball. Okay. But it wasn't just plain metal, was it? There were markings. Yeah, intricate symbols etched onto the surface. People immediately started comparing them to, well, everything. Ancient scripts like runes or ogum, even Mesopotamian cuneiform. It's quite a mix of comparisons. And there was that crown design, too. Right. A central design that apparently looks eerily like a microchip layout. Radiating lines, dots. It sounds very technical, almost. Like something engineered. But how? With no seams. Exactly. That seamlessness challenges, you know, standard manufacturing. How do you join metal parts without leaving any trace? It suggests something very advanced or maybe just different. And then there's the weight. This is maybe the most baffling part for me. Oh, absolutely. The reports claim it initially weighed around two kilograms. Pretty light for a metal sphere that size, maybe. But then... But then, while it was being stored, the story goes that its weight increased significantly, up to about 11 kilograms. Weight from two kilos to 11. How is that even possible? That breaks. Well, physics, doesn't it? It certainly challenges our everyday understanding of mass and physics, yeah. If those measurements are accurate, it's deeply perplexing. What could cause mass to just increase like that? It implies some kind of internal change or maybe an interaction with something external we don't understand. Okay, so weird object, weird weight change. The next step has to be looking inside, right? Mm -hmm. Initial scans. Yep, radiological imaging. That's where Dr. Jose Luis Velasquez's initial x-ray work comes in, trying to peer beneath that polished surface. And what did the x-rays show? Did they solve anything? Well, they added more layers to the mystery, really. They confirmed it was solid. And just like the outside, internally, no visible welds or joints reinforces that idea of unusual construction. So still no clue how it was made, but what was inside? Okay, so picture this. Right in the center, there seemed to be a nucleus, a core area that was less dense than the rest. Less dense, like hollow, or just different material. The report suggests lower density, maybe not completely hollow, but distinct. And then surrounding this nucleus, just below the orb as equator, they found a ring. A ring made of what? Made of 18 tiny spheres. Microspheres. Dr. Velasquez apparently referred to this whole structure, this ring of spheres, as resembling a chip. A chip made of tiny balls. Okay. And you mentioned something about the outside surface relating to this. Yes, this is really strange. Yeah. On the outside, there were tiny dot-like impressions or dimples, and these dimples seem to line up perfectly with where those 18 microspheres were located inside. So the internal spheres were pushing out, no. making marks on the outside. It certainly looks that way from the descriptions, like something internal is affecting the external shape in a very specific pattern. Weird. 
What else did the x-rays show? Any sign of how it was joined together? They did detect something, an equatorial seam, a line going around the middle suggesting maybe two halves were joined there. You said no welds or fasteners. Exactly. No visible fasteners or traditional welds inside or out. Yet the x-ray could detect this seam. So whatever method was used to join the halves, it's not conventional. Maybe some kind of molecular bonding or... Well, it's hard to say. And what about those symbols? The crown design, the runes, or whatever they are. Did the x-ray show those? Ah, see, that's another huge puzzle. No, the x-rays did not show the external symbols or the crown design at all. They were completely invisible on the scan. Invisible to x-rays? How? It suggests they're either incredibly superficial, like a coating thinner than paint, or perhaps made of a material that just doesn't interact with x-rays much. Maybe organic, maybe something else entirely. It makes figuring out what they are, or what they mean, even harder. So the picture we're getting is advanced materials, bizarre construction, weird internal structure, invisible markings, and that unexplained weight gain. Pretty much sums it up. It challenges current materials, science, aerospace engineering, just about everything. Yeah. As at Cortex Zero hinted, it feels beyond our current tech level. Which naturally leads people to speculate wildly, I imagine. Oh, definitely. The theory started flying almost immediately. Everything from, you know, secret human tech all the way to, well... Aliens. <laughs> Let's get into those. I saw this frequency wave theory mentioned by at Drew Ponder. Sounds complex. It is. It's a very detailed, very specific hypothesis about how this thing might work, assuming it's technology. Okay, break it down for us. What's the gist? So at Drew Ponder basically suggests the orb isn't just passive metal, it's a functioning device, a self-powered machine that operates using frequency manipulation and resonance. Frequency manipulation, Why? like sound waves radio waves more like manipulating fundamental frequencies possibly electromagnetic possibly something more exotic the theory proposes that the crown design isn't just decoration it's the core processor a processor made of metal not exactly he describes it as functioning without traditional circuits instead it uses wave interference patterns within special materials he calls it a brain made of glass metal and superconductors the crown supposedly splits a single input frequency into 16 different rhythms using those 18 microspheres as control points. Okay, wave interference, where waves meet and either boost or cancel each other. Precisely. And the 18 microspheres, in this theory, they act like switches. Frequency switches. Switches for what? For controlling the orb's balance and, crucially, its interaction with gravity. He suggests activating these switches causes them to physically push outwards, creating those dimples we talked about. Think of them like tuning pegs on an instrument but for fine tuning a gravity canceling field gravity cancellation yeah. seriously how would that even work well according to the theory it involves generating a coherent plasma in that low density nucleus maybe using ultra cold spinning gases plasma like in a neon sign or the sun sort of but likely a very specific controlled type this internal plasma, combined with the frequency manipulation, is supposed to allow the orb to detune itself from Earth's natural frequencies, like the Schumann resonance, those background electromagnetic waves in our atmosphere. Detune from Earth's frequencies. Yeah, the idea is that by precisely shifting its own resonant frequency away from Earth's, it creates a kind of harmonic feedback loop that essentially cancels out its mass, allowing it to float to maneuver. Oh, okay. Basically to unplug from gravity. Wow. Okay. It's a lot. So if it's unplugged from gravity, why did it crash yeah. the power line? That's exactly what at Drew Ponder suggests. An electromagnetic shock wave, maybe lightning nearby, or definitely the surge from hitting the power line could have disrupted the delicate frequency patterns inside. Like scrambling the signal. Exactly. Causing one or more of those microsphere switches to malfunction. If the gravity cancellation fails, boom. Its mass effectively returns, maybe even increases somehow due to the malfunction, hence the potential weight change, and it falls. That is an incredibly elaborate theory. Yeah, very sci-fi. It absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Highly speculative, relying on physics we don't fully understand yet, but it attempts to connect a lot of the weird observations. Okay, so that's one complex idea. Then there's the more straightforward, if you can call it that, explanation. It's not from around here. Extraterrestrial. Right. And Jamie Masson's name often comes up in connection with this angle, which adds its own layer, given his history. His controversial history, yeah. But the ET idea itself focuses on the anomalies, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Proponents point to the seamless construction, the internal spheres, the weird markings, things that seem beyond current human capabilities. There was that website, unidentifiedphenomena.com, suggesting it could be part of some non-human monitoring effort. A probe? 
possibly. And the fact the markings are X-ray invisible just adds to that alien tech mystique. How do you analyze symbols you can't properly image? But surely not everyone is buying the alien probe theory. There must be huge skepticism. Oh, absolutely massive. The hoax theory is very strong. You mentioned at Gratcliffe calling it an elaborate hoax. Massan's involvement definitely fuels that skepticism for many. And the lack of, you know, proper scientific papers. It's mm -hmm. mostly tabloids and social media. That's a major point for skeptics. If this were real, wouldn't mainstream science be all over it? The Daily Mail isn't exactly nature or science, plus there are historical parallels. Like the Bet Sphere? Exactly. Yeah. At Tsoukalos brought that up. Huge mystery back in the 70s. Strange sphere seemed to move on its own. Turned out to be a piece of industrial equipment. A stainless steel ball valve check ball, I think. So a perfectly mundane explanation in the end. Right. It's a cautionary tale. The Booga Orb could easily be something similar maybe not that specific part but something terrestrial maybe deliberately fabricated to look mysterious okay so what other terrestrial explanations are floating around besides the deliberate hoax i saw steak and shake seriously uh, yeah that one's out there at mf brownie threw that out maybe jokingly but then at own approach actually posted a comparison showing the orbs crown design next to the stake and shake logo and there's a resemblance there is a visual similarity yeah enough for people to notice and joke about a very strange promotional campaign probably unlikely but a gravity defying burger head okay maybe not yeah what about more plausible earthly origins military tech that's definitely on the table. At Klukti System suggested it could be a decoy or perhaps some advanced military prototype being tested, maybe even intentionally revealed or leaked. Does the tech described, like the plasma and spheres, fit with military research? Some elements do resonate with research into things like electromagnetic propulsion, maybe even quantum technology applications. It's fringe, but governments do explore advanced concepts. So a secret project isn't impossible. And Reddit had another idea something less exotic. Yeah, over on the UFO subreddit, some suggested it might be a manufactured calibration phantom. A what now? A calibration phantom. It's a precisely made object used to test and calibrate imaging equipment, like high-end X-ray or CT scanners. They often have specific internal structures, maybe weird densities, precise shapes, like needles or spheres for checking resolution and accuracy. So the internal spheres and nucleus could just be features for a scanner test. It's a possibility, or even a high-end complex art piece. These explanations try to fit the weird features into a known, albeit specialized, human context. It kind of aligns with Occam's razor, the simplest explanation. Making a seamless metal ball with precise internal bits is hard, sure, but maybe not alien hard, just high-tech human hard for a specific purpose. Okay, so we've got aliens, secret frequency tech, hoaxes, burger ads, military decoys, calibration tools, quite the range. It really covers the spectrum. So, <laughs> stepping back, regardless of which theory, if any, is right, what are the bigger implications here, if it were alien? Well, that changes everything, obviously. Concrete proof of non-human intelligence. It would force a total rethink of our place in the cosmos, trigger massive scientific investigation into new physics, propulsion, materials, you name it. A complete paradigm shift. Absolutely. But even if it's terrestrial. Yeah, what if it's just very advanced human tech, secret or not? Even that is significant. It would suggest human technology, perhaps in secret programs, is way further ahead in certain areas, maybe propulsion, materials, energy, than it's publicly known. It points towards serious work in those fields that Drew Ponder touched on, like harmonic resonance, EM drives, maybe quantum effects. But we're still missing the hard proof, the peer-reviewed science. Critically so. Right now, it's all based on initial reports, videos, preliminary analysis, and a lot of speculation. We desperately need rigorous, independent scientific investigation. Are there plans for more tests? At True Ponder, the FW2 theorist, proposed things like cryogenic testing, shining terahertz lasers at it, maybe neutron imaging techniques that could reveal more about its material composition and internal workings without necessarily taking it apart. See if it really does have a brain made of glass, metal, and superconductor. Something like that. See what it's actually made of, how it's structured, if those spheres do anything. And meanwhile, it's become this cultural thing, hasn't it? Yeah. Everyone online seems fascinated or dismissive. Definitely. It's tapped into that deep human fascination with the unknown, with mystery. The intense debate online, the polarization, it says a lot about how we react to things that challenge our understanding, whether it's potentially from space or just from a very clever workshop. So summing up, where does that leave us with the Booga Orbs? 
still pretty much a question mark. A big one, yeah. We have this physical object with truly bizarre properties. The seamless build, the internal spheres, the weight thing, those invisible martings, and then a whole collection of competing stories trying to make sense of it all. From ET probes to calibration exactly. tools. Exactly. And the investigation isn't over. Right. You said more tests are supposedly happening. As of early May 2025, the reports indicated that metallurgical and structural testing were still underway. So hopefully, maybe, we'll get clearer answers eventually. It's quite something. Whatever this orb is, real or hoax, alien or human, it's definitely made us think. It really has. It forces you to question, doesn't it? Yeah. What assumptions are we making about technology, about physics, about what's possible? Whether this thing is a genuine anomaly or just a clever trick, it pushes us to think about those boundaries. What might be out there, or even right here, that we just don't understand yet makes you wonder what the next few years might reveal.